Hi, I'm Lisa and welcome to my channel, The Southern Seamstress. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you've had time to relax during the holidays and that you're ready to start the new year. In this video, I'd like to do a quick review of all the clothing items I've made in 2023. But before I get started, I'd like to thank everyone who watched my last video, who gave it a thumbs up or wrote me a nice comment. I really enjoyed reading all of those. And it was really nice receiving such a great response from that video. So for some of you who probably didn't see my first video, I talked about how I had started learning to sew as a very young child. Um, my mom was a great seamstress and I sewed a lot uh, as a preteen, teen, young adult. But as I got older, I mostly just started sewing household items like curtains and pillows and blankets, not really any clothing. But I started watching a lot of YouTube vloggers uh, towards the end of last year and it really uh, got me thinking about how much I did enjoy sewing and making clothes. So I decided at the beginning of the year to start um, making some clothing items. And I've counted them up and for this year I've made 20 different clothing items. I've got 19 here, I did give one away. Now I did sew some other things, uh, some children items that I uh, donated and some Christmas gifts um, that I've given away. But these are all the clothing items that I've made except for one piece. So in my prior videos, I've reviewed all these items and talked quite in depth about uh, the pattern and, and the construction of the pattern and what I liked or didn't like and the fabric choices that I made. So in this video, I'm not going to go into a great detail or be super long, uh, but I will link in the description below each item and the video um, that it was featured in. So I've made up a list of all the items that I've made and I looked at all the different pattern companies that I had used. For these 20 items, I have used 14 different pattern companies, and I've gotten my fabric from seven different fabric stores, and they were all online. So when I decided to start sewing clothes again, I knew that I wanted to be able to sew some knit items. That's something I hadn't really done in the past. And for these items, I really wanted to have a serger or overlocker. I had never used one before, so back in the spring, I bought a baby lock a serger that's also a combination cover stitch machine. And I've really, really enjoyed using it. So for the first item uh, that I made, it's just a simple little t-shirt. This is the first t-shirt I've ever made. Uh, and it's a pattern off of Etsy by Tienda de Patrons. And it was just a very simple, basic uh, t-shirt. The fabric is from Joanne Fabrics that I ordered online. It's just a cute little lilac folklore uh, print. And I think it turned out really well for my first t-shirt. It's very comfortable. Uh, I like how it fits. It's uh, just kind of semi-fitted. And so I wore this quite a bit uh, this summer. The second item that I made this year was also a t-shirt, but it was a color block t-shirt. And this is McCall's 7600. Now the fabric that I used is all from Spoonflower fabric. I had never heard of Spoonflower fabric uh, before this year, but I had seen it mentioned on some videos. And so I took a look at their website and I just really fell in love with them. Now they are a little pricier on some of their fabrics and I always do wait for a sale because they typically run quite a few sales and they'll usually run their fabric uh, from 20 to 30% off. So it's always good to have what you want selected so that when a sale comes up, you can grab it then. But this is just their cotton spandex jersey. And I believe all these uh, prints were by the same designer. But I really liked uh, how this turned out. Uh, it was really cute on, I think. And it looked really good with uh, white jeans and white shorts. So that's the color block t-shirt from McCall's 7600. Now, after I made uh, a couple of knit shirts, I was ready to sew uh, a woven shirt. And this pattern is also by McCall's, and it is McCall's 7360. 
Now this fabric is also by Spoonflower because when I did order from them, I ordered several uh, different pieces of fabric. So you're gonna see several items that are made from Spoonflower fabrics. But I really love this shirt. It's made from cotton lawn, and I had never used cotton lawn before. When I was younger, I don't even remember having that choice of having cotton lawn. But I love the lightness of it, and I love the silky feel of it. And I think it comes out of the dryer uh, fairly wrinkle-free. Sometimes I touch up this little placket a little bit. But I really uh, like this top. And I don't want to go into great details. The only thing I didn't like really making it was this banded collar. Um, it had just tremendous easing that you had to put into it. And I haven't, I don't think, pressed it since it was washed last. So it, it looks a little puckery right here. But um, I want to make this shirt again. I'm really not looking forward to the uh, collar band. Um, now, some people were saying they had problems with the placket. The placket itself uh, was fairly easy. Um, the only problem I had with it was I've got a couple little puckers down here on the corners and that's just because I didn't quite clip into the to the stitching line that you're supposed to. I always have this fear that if I cut right to the stitching line that it's going to start raveling over time. So that's just uh, my fault right there. But next time I'm going to be a little braver and see how it turns out. But anyway, I was really pleased with this. It was also a great shirt that goes with white uh, pants, jeans, and shorts. So that's McCall's 7360. Now the next blouse I did is also a woven top pattern. And it is this little sleeveless blouse. And this is Simplicity 9467. It has several views with different sleeve lengths and I chose the sleeveless version because I made it like in the middle of summer. It was really hot. Now this fabric is also a cotton lawn. It's also from Spoonflower. I think this is a beautiful print. It's a watercolor that the designer has uh, drawn up and then they've uh, transferred it and printed it on the fabric. So I think that's really pretty. I love all the jewel tones. I like the shirt. Um, the only negative I had or would change mostly if I made it again was I really wish it was a little bit longer so that I could tuck it in the front end better because I don't like really blousy uh, tops unless they're kind of, you know, uh, tucked in. But other than that, I really like it. It felt really cool to wear in the summer. And I'd like to make maybe um, one of the other versions that has the longer uh, sleeves in it. Now this banded collar didn't give me near as many problems. It, it didn't have that much easing in it. So that is uh, Simplicity 9467. So after that, I went back uh, to my knits and made another knit top. Now this is the Terrifa T by French Navy. It's the first French Navy pattern I had made. Um, when I was younger, the only patterns I used then uh, were the like the big four or big five. I, I think it was just the big four patterns then and we didn't have PDF patterns. So all that has been new to me and the great selection that there is just blows my mind sometimes. It's just really sometimes hard to pick a pattern because there's so many great patterns out there. But anyway, this is uh, the Terrific Tea by French Navy. I love the color blocking option on it. This fabric is a cotton knit by Spoonflower Fabrics. I think it's a really uh, cute print and I really enjoyed wearing this little t-shirt. Now for my next sewing mix, I kind of changed it up a little bit and made a skirt. It is a longer style skirt uh, by Berta Patterns and it's number 6357. I made this out of Spoonflower's Crepe de Chine fabric. It's a really cute uh, dandelion print that came in different colorways and I chose this kind of grayish one. Now this Berta pattern has a little underslip, a lining, and I made it out of just some cotton lawn that I think I got from Joanne Fabrics. 
I think this is a really pretty skirt. Uh, I wanted to dress up the waist a little bit. I had enough fabric to kind of make this little sash belt that I can tie around it. Now the only thing I would change on this is I would make my lining out of a more silky type fabric uh, because it kind of adds some bulk and I think it would uh, be even drapier without the um, cotton underneath it. And I didn't really get to wear this much this summer, but I'm hoping to wear it more uh, this spring. So item number seven is another t-shirt and it's by Butterick 6848. I also made it with some Spoonflower uh, knit fabric. I think it's a cotton spandex. And it also is by another uh, designer that's a watercolor artist. And I thought this little bird print was so sweet uh, I've got the bird right here in the middle and then on the back and then I put it I think on this sleeve But I was really pleased with this shirt. It was really easy to put together a really simple pattern I think it does come with a couple maybe different neck versions and several different sleeve lengths So I do plan to make this pattern again. So that was from Butterick So I made quite a few different tops. So I decided to make a skirt Next, and this is a very simple little skirt, and it's McCall's 8055. And I know this sounds like a broken record, but this is also made from Spoonflower Fabrics. It's a jersey knit, and I thought this knit was like the perfect fabric uh, for this skirt. It drapes really well, it's not very heavy, and it just makes a really nice casual summer skirt. I did wear the skirt several times. It looks cute both with little white sneakers or sandals and it goes with a lot of different uh, colored t-shirts that I have. So that was another McCall's pattern 8055. Now next up is another color block t-shirt and this one is by Ellie and Mac and it's their Discoverer tee. This was the first Ellie and Mac uh, pattern I'd used. I thought it had good instructions. I did find that Ellie and Mac's uh, tops are made fairly long. And this one, I think, is actually about four and a half inches shorter um, than the actual pattern. Now, one reason it's shorter is because I just didn't have a lot of this fabric. Uh, this is as long as I could make it, and I thought I was going to have to put a band on the bottom of this pink. But when I tried it on, it was long enough, so I just left it like this. Uh, if I'd had more fabric, I might have made it like another inch longer. But I think it's a really cute pattern, and then the back yoke matches the front yoke. Now this fabric is more fabric from Spoonflower. It's the same design as you saw in one of the color block t-shirts, uh, in that second t-shirt that I showed you that one of the panels was uh, the same print right here. So that's Ellie and Max Discoverer T with Spoonflower fabric. So earlier in the spring or summer, I had ordered several different solid color pieces of linen from Fabrics Dash Store. And I made the next top out of their unbleached linen. That's sort of a really, soft ivory color and this is the kit blouse by seamworks pattern so this is the first seamworks uh, pattern i had used and they had really good instructions very good illustrations uh, i really enjoyed working with the linen it sewed uh, really well uh, it's got a nice little drape uh, the only thing i think i changed on this pattern was i made the straps long enough to tie in the front. I think they showed it tied in the front, but there it was just barely long and I wanted the ties to come down longer. But I think this is a really uh, pretty summer blouse. It's very uh, cool to wear in this hot, humid weather uh, that we have here in Arkansas. So that's the kit blouse by Seamwork Patterns. After that, I made another item that was made out of linen uh, from Fabrics Dash Store. This is a little romper pattern off of Etsy by India Pattern. And I made it just from this charcoal linen. And I did several different tweaks uh, to this pattern because it was very unstructured, and you can still see it's fairly unstructured, but it's a lot more fitted 
um, than it was. And I'll link the video uh, below that I talked about it and how I modified it. One thing I did was add uh, this partial lining to the top that gives a little bit more body and just a nicer uh, edge around the neck and the sides. But this was really cool to wear this summer. I had several t-shirts that went with it. So this was the first romper that I made this year. Now I had also got some linen fabrics from Mood Fabrics. So with one of those pieces of linen, I made um, the dress that's on my dress form. Now it might look familiar because this is the dress uh, version of Seamworks kit blouse. It's the kit dress. So it's just like the blouse, but it extends down. Now I love this linen. I think it is so pretty. I love the colors. Um, I really like orchids. I have a whole collection of them in my sunroom and I just thought it was very pretty. And I think it, uh, this pattern showcases this fabric very well. And here's the back. I did lengthen these little uh, straps and I like how they crisscross in the back and then tie in the front. Now I do plan to make this pattern again and the only thing I'm gonna change is uh, I'm probably gonna bring this V-neck up maybe an inch because I don't really like low necklines and especially since I'm shorter, I think it comes down lower on me than just an average height person. And two, I didn't really realize until after I got it made and I was looking back uh, on one of their other patterns that, that their patterns are made, I think, for a, a C cup and I'm more of a B cup. So I think next time I'll do the alteration to decrease the bust to a B cup because I think it's got a little extra fabric right here. And I think it would just have a nicer shape if it was uh, fitted for a B cup. But other than that, I really like the pattern. So we're up to uh, item number 13, and it is also an item that uses fabric from Mood Fabrics. And it is this pretty little floral t-shirt pattern. It's called the Lori Pleated Tee by Named Patterns. And now it was the first time I'd made anything from that pattern company. Uh, they did have good instructions. And I did like this pattern. The only thing that gave me problems was this fabric itself. Even though it's beautiful fabric, it feels great, but it was fabric that just crawled around and shifted and moved. It was difficult to cut out. It was also a little difficult to make these pleats straight across because the fabric just wanted to keep moving on me. But I did get it made and I'm really well pleased with it. I really like it on. Uh, it's very comfortable and flowy. I think when I make it next time I made downsize. It's fairly wide uh, across the body and I think I could size down and it would still be slightly oversized. But and it's just got a flat back. But I really love this fabric. Both of these fabrics from Mood were two of my favorite fabrics in terms of prints and colors. So that's the Lori Pleated Tee by Name Patterns. So now we're down to the last six items that I made. Now the next one is a repeat uh, of one of the patterns. When I made the Terrific Tee in the short sleeve version, I really liked it. So I decided to make it again in a long sleeve version. And this fabric is also from Spoonflower Fabrics. It was another cute bird print, a different designer. I love these little birds. I had written the designer uh, if she would make a solid color design uh, with these little peachy pink dots so I could uh, use it and make a color block t-shirt, and she did. Now, the pattern itself does not have a long sleeve version but I go in depth in a video that I reviewed this on how to make it into a long sleeve t-shirt. And I will link that video below. But I think it turned out really cute. I did make this uh, one, I think a couple inches longer. I think on the short sleeve one, I had shortened the pattern by an inch. And on this one, I added an inch, so it's two inches longer 
I just wanted to come down a little bit longer uh, for the cooler weather. Here's the back. Now, I liked this design so much that I had also bought uh, the same design in a canvas, but they're a larger print of it. And made some pillow covers for some pillows uh, on my front porch and those turned out really cute and I don't have those in here but I showed them in a, in a past video. So that's uh, another version of the Terrific Tea by French Navy. The next pattern I made up was one by Itch to Stitch and it's their Lamont top. Now this was the first Itch to Stitch pattern I had made and it also had really good instructions and illustrations. Uh, I really love this fabric. Uh, I believe this was from Guthrie and Ghani. I got several different floral prints from Guthrie and Ghani. I think this is the only uh, one that was floral that I got made up. I'll have several more to make up this spring. Uh, but I thought this pattern showcased the strop well. I centered it on the front and then on the back. And then it's kind of going down the sleeves. I think this is a really pretty pattern. I think next time though that I will uh, downsize. I think I really made it a size too big because it's drapey, I can still wear it. Uh, and also, I think I'm gonna make it out of um, still a drapey fabric, but something with a little bit more body. I think it would do well in a linen uh, because it's supposed to have like top stitching down here and the top when I tried to top stitch it on this kind of rayonish fabric it just didn't uh, look good so I left the top stitch off but I have several different pretty pieces of solid uh, linen that um, I think I'm going to make one of those in this pattern in the spring so that's the Lamont top that itch to stitch now just to let you know if you hear any little pitter patter noises in this video is because one of my dogs keeps wanting to go in and out in and out here she usually will just sit in her bed uh, that's across from me on the floor but for some reason she's very restless and she won't stay out and she won't stay in so the next i'm going to talk about is actually the one that i have on and it is by fibra mood and it's their aerial sweater this is the first fiber mood pattern that I've made and it went together very well, it had good instructions. Now this pattern uh, only comes in a short sleeve version but I lengthened mine and made a long sleeve version because it was for winter. And in my video, I go into how I made the pattern for the longer sleeve. But I really like this sweater. It's made from a rayon sweater knit from Sewing Studio. It's just very comfortable. Instead of gathers, it's got these pleats on the sleeves that I really like and were really easy to put in. I've worn this sweater several times and I usually get compliments every time I wear it. And I've got another piece of fabric, uh, the same type of fabric from Sewing Studio that's like a burgundy with kind of some, I think, white or cream running, kind of streaky uh, design. And I'm thinking about uh, making the same sweater out of that fabric. So this was Fiber Mood's Aerial Sweater. Okay, we're almost finished. The next one is another itch to stitch pattern. And it's the Isleris top. It's a long sleeve t-shirt. And what I liked about this um, was that it had a square neck where none of my other t-shirts had a square neck. And it also had raglan sleeves. Now, this uh, knit fabric was from Guthrie and Ghani. I had got it back uh, earlier in the spring or summer. Now, I haven't worn this t-shirt too much. Uh, although it's long sleeves, I think it looks kind of springy. And I'm kind of saving it to wear uh, maybe more in the spring when it starts to warm up a little bit, but it's still cooler. I think it will look really good then. But this pattern went together fairly easy. It has some little darts on the top of the sleeves that give it a nice shape. And I think I'll get quite a bit of use out of it uh, when the weather warms up just a little bit. So that's Itch to Stitches is Lara's top. So the last two items are also long sleeves and items that I'm going to wear this winter. And 
The first one is by Style Art Patterns and it's their Preston Knit Sweater. This fabric is a sweater knit from Minerva that I really think is pretty. It kind of has a stained glass window effect. I love all the jewel tones in it. I didn't think the fabric would work very well for the uh, neckband because it doesn't have very, it has some stretch, but it doesn't have very good recovery. So I had previously gotten this black rib knit off of uh, Etsy. And I think it turned out well with the coordinating neck and wristbands. But that was Style Arcs. Now it's hard to tell, but it does have some pockets on the sides. But I feel like these pockets are really too small to be useful. And a lot of other reviewers also mentioned that. So I'm thinking uh, when I make it again, because I do like the fit of the sweater and I really like the sleeves. They have a little dart on top of these raglan sleeves that fit really well. I'm going to just leave the pockets off and I'm thinking about uh, banding the bottom of it to be you know, more like a bottom of a sweatshirt. But I've really enjoyed wearing this sweater. It's very comfortable and I, I love the colors in it. So now we've come to the last one that I have to show you. And it is the last thing that I made and it's Ellie and Max Lindsay sweatshirt. Now it's made from sweatshirt fleece from Studio Fabrics. I chose three different colors to give it a color block option. It has this nice little kangaroo uh, pocket that keeps your hands warm or you can you know, put your keys or phone or whatever in it. It has several different versions. It has one that has a hood. I just made mine the crew neck. And of course you can put, uh, leave the pocket off or add it. I did have the pocket. And then you can have a banded bottom like this one or it can just be a hemmed version. Now, I, I do like this sweatshirt. It's really comfortable to wear. I shortened it a couple inches and it is still very long. So I think Ellie and Mac just tend to make their tops quite long. So when I make it again, I think I might size down a size because it is quite roomy on me and also try to shorten it another couple of inches. I made it two inches shorter, but it really needs to be about four inches shorter for me. But I was pleased with it. I like this color combination. And it's just a really uh, comfortable sweatshirt to wear in cooler weather. Now I made one more item, but I've given it away to one of my daughters. It was a retro romper pattern uh, by Simplicity and it was 9792. And I thought it looked really cute and uh, really streamlined, but I have to say that of all the patterns that I've made, uh, I've disliked that one the most. It had the most odd fit to it. It looked like it was supposed to be a fitted romper, very, like I said, slim line, but it, it was the most ill-fitting pattern that I made. It had a scoop neck uh, that kind of had straps that come up, but they were, the neckline was very wide set. On the picture, it looked like it fit the model fine, but on me, it looked like it was about two inches too wide this way. And also the neckline, the scoop neckline on the back and the front, both gapped. It just gapped, it didn't fit to the body. I made it a couple inches shorter, but it was still too long in the stride for me. Uh, and my daughter is several, is about six inches taller than me. So what I did was I gave it to her, but I modified it where I took in the sides. Uh, so what I did was I, I had to put in darts on the front neckline. I think I put in darts on the back neckline and then it had the seam going up the back that I kind of made a big dart in just to give it some shape in the back. Anyway, um, she said she liked it. I'm not sure if she's actually going to wear it, but I have given it to her. So hopefully she'll get a little uh, wear out of it. I really like the fabric that I made it from. It was kind of an aqua stripe, uh, kind of a cotton gauze uh, from Sewing Studio. So I guess that's really the only fail or the only pattern that really didn't work out for me. So I guess that's not too bad of uh, just having one out of 20 that I really uh, couldn't wear. 
So that wraps up my review of the clothing I made in 2023. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing those. And if you want more information about each one, I will link uh, the videos that go to each one in the description below. So I'm filming this New Year's Day weekend. So I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. I hope it's a good year. I hope it's a healthy year for everyone. So I'm hoping everyone has time to get a lot of sewing in and be creative and just do things that you enjoy and spend time uh, with your family and friends. I know I've got to get busy and get my winter sewing done because before you know it, it'll be springtime. And I've already decided I'm probably not going to get around to making all the uh, winter garments that I've already got the patterns and fabrics for. So some of those will probably carry over to next winter. Well, my dogs are getting restless. I think they're ready to have their dinner. So until I see you in the next video, take care and happy sewing.